Hi, uh, I'm Richard Marshall from Wealth Wizards. Uh, I saw this on Twitter a while back. Uh, we put a PHP monolith in a container about two years ago. We put it on Kubernetes, and that's why I'm here today. Um, so I, when I was kind of writing this and trying to, uh, to practice for it, I was trying to do it in front of my kids, and they didn't really understand what I was talking about. I've, I've got three young daughters. I thought, if I do it in the form of emoji, maybe that will help. Today I found out if I'd done it with Denise Yu, then it would have, you know, she'd have just been able to explain all of it. So I, I live and learn. Um, so first of all, we build COPS, uh, we build Kubernetes using COPS with Debian. And uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of Debian. Um, but what we've learned is we'd actually rather be building Kubernetes with CoreOS. It's just kind of much better suited to, to that kind of container runtime. Uh, Kubernetes and its API make uh, CD a piece of cake. The API is great for, <laughs> for managing kind of things like deployments. You can trigger deployments through uh, a webhook uh, triggered by a commit, for example. And in fact, I think the APIs to Kube are kind of the, the DevOps missing link. You can manage pretty much anything in Kubernetes through, through the API. So you can manage uh, security and the routing of the traffic and the deployments and delivery. Um, we're just coming into using Istio with our Kube cluster. I know there's been a lot of talk about Istio for probably the last year or so, and no one's really kind of done anything with it. We're just finding a place for it, and we're just starting to ease it onto our production clusters now. Um, and for us, it's looking like using something like Istio is kind of the difference between you know, one person going fast on a bike to mass, uh, you know, mass transit at high speed, it should make a really big difference for us. So um, if you are using Kube or looking at it, I, I can recommend looking at Istio. It's been a big help. Security in Kube. There's actually loads of features around security uh, in Kubernetes, and I'd recommend using as many as you can from day one. There are things like uh, kind of container runtime isolation, network isolation, uh, RBAC. We, we kind of left a lot of those till the end, so it was a real problem for us. Secrets management in Kube is not so good. Uh, we've actually adopted HashCorp Vault, which we find awesome. We can do secrets management there, key management. We can do things like uh, encryption in transit. So um, it, it makes that job much easier for us. We've also found that, that pretty much all the HashCorp suite are pretty much the unsung heroes of Kubernetes for us. We rely heavily on Packer, Terraform, Vault. Even Console comes in there to help us define and build out the pipeline. So HashCorp doesn't get as much uh, kind of credit as it should. Get used to rebuilding Kubernetes and keeping it updated. In, in one month, there were 500 merge pull requests, and there's a major release every three months. Um, so we get really kind of used to updating it, keeping it updated. In fact, we're always updating it one way or another. Um, we've also got used to the idea that ju not just our AWS instances as cattle or our, our pods and applications as cattle, but our clusters are cattle too. We, we get used to deleting our clusters, rebuilding them. Um, and, and that's something I'd recommend everyone gets into the habit of they're using this. We would love to be using GKE. We'd love to just take a cube cluster off the shelf and let somebody else run it for us. Unfortunately, auditors really like a kind of an IaaS definition. They like uh, a very clear boundary of who's responsible for what. So we've ended up building our own cube clusters. We find building Docker containers is really slow for us, and it's, it's quite pooey. It, it's the biggest problem we have. It's the slowest part of our pipeline. It's where we spend uh, probably the single most amount of time in our, in our platform team. Um, so we're now starting to look at serverless. <laughs> um, we want to stay vendor neutral, so we don't want to look at Lambda. Uh, I mean, we, we could look at AWS Lambda or something like um, uh, Azure Functions if you wanted. Um, but we've actually decided to take the route of building serverless on top of Kubernetes, and there's quite a few, quite a few frameworks for this. Um, Fission and Kubeless are both looking quite promising. Knative is, is very new and, I, again, I think immature. Um, but that holds some promise for us. We're also finding that file storage on AWS in Kubernetes is also pretty immature. At this point, we don't trust putting our customer data in Kubernetes, so we use kind of Kube as a, a transitory place. Um, but file storage is not great. We also have a lot of problems with monitoring. Um, we don't really know, we don't get a good picture of what's going on inside it. Uh, we get a ton of alerts and we don't really understand why. So if anyone out there has some ideas and they can come to me afterwards, that'd be great. Um, it, it's kind of at the point where rarely does a day go by where I think, I could probably have solved this with Nagios, but I really don't want to be installing Nagios. So um, 
yeah, if anyone's got any tips on, on what we can do to monitor CUBE more effectively, please get in touch with me afterwards. Um, but on balance, we at Wealth Wizards, we love running a CUBE cluster. It actually works really well for us. We get a lot of flexibility with it. But if you're just looking at it now, I'd recommend start with serverless and see if that serves what you need. It's going to be a lot easier for you. Thank you. If you've, uh, if you've got any questions, come and find me afterwards. I know we're not allowed any now. Thank you.